Hey, what's up guys, another video here. So today I wanna to talk about news on the economy and some talking points from Pelosi and Kamala Harris. So later this morning, we're set to learn that economic growth in the second quarter of 2020 fell by the most on record. According to a Bloomberg consensus forecast, Wall Street economists estimate the economy contracted at an annual rate of 34.5% in the second quarter of this year as lockdowns brought the global economy to a screeching halt. This data will offer a look back at a period when many businesses were forced to close, tens of millions of workers were laid off or furloughed seemingly overnight, and consumers hunkered down overnight over fears about contracting the illness. So obviously this is not good news, but it was very expected that we would have a huge contraction in the second quarter of 2020. And of course, you know, people are hoarding cash at record amounts. So, you know, it's understandable. There's so much uncertainty in the economy. However, I think now that, you know, things are getting back online and I think these temporary reclosures will only be again, temporary and, you know, GDP will tick up in the third quarter. And, you know, with that, we're going to have increase in uh, petroleum consumption and natural gas consumption, things like that. So I think it'll be fine overall. And there may be periods of additional lockdown, but it's not like it's going to be locked down to the extent that it was through March, April, May. So I think from that standpoint is good. And this is going to lead us to the next talking point with uh, Nancy Pelosi. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi on Wednesday said that the Republican Party seems to have a disdain for working people in a searing assessment of the stalled negotiations for a sweeping stimulus deal. Speaking to CNN's Anna Cooper on AC360, Pelosi asserted that the GOP, quote, holds a disdain or sort of a condescension toward working people, it seems, because they don't know how to trust uh, how they may use the $600, that kind of thing. Oh, they have money to pay the rent. They're not paying the rent, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the people are hurting. She continued the unemployment rate is high and that we have a way to address this in terms of honoring our heroes, testing, tracing, treatment, as well as money in pockets for the American people. So obviously, I mean, I get the side of both the Republicans in the Senate and the House Democrats. However, I think because things are coming back online and the closures aren't as rampant that the $600 uh, per week unemployment is not as justified as before. And again, as many Republicans stated that the 600 per week unemployment plus the state unemployment, it in some cases was greater than the amount that they would have received through a regular W-2 or a regular paycheck. So in that sense, you know, that can't not continue forever. Of course, it may cause a disincentive for not working. However, because the federal unemployment is running out, then you know the workers obviously have to return. But if this $600 unemployment per week is continued, then again, it's gonna create additional disincentives to go back to work. However, if it is reduced, and the reduced amount of federal unemployment with the state unemployment is not greater than the amount that they would have received, again, in a W-2 or paycheck to paycheck, I think it may be more effective, assuming that the closures aren't as rampant as before, which is the case in many states. So I'm more on the Republican side where they're not giving as much, maybe not as low as 200, but something definitely lower than 600. Again, something that isn't greater than the amount that they would receive at a normal job. So I am more on the Republicans on this side and hopefully it works out. But again, this is a very sticky talking point for both the House Democrats and the Senate Republicans because it seems like the major issue that's hanging things up. And it's good that they are agreeing upon the $1,200 one-time stimulus check. Again, this, is, this will be the second one because the other one, the first one was issued in March, April. But I think because they are in accordance and agreement with this check, that's not a sticking point. The sticking point are the other issues with you know, education funding, or the state unemployment, you know, help with the funding, things like that. So, you know, it's not looking good for August 7th. And my guess is probably early September and you'll get your stimulus checks by late September, as I've stated many times before. So uh, I want to go over a crazy 
proposal by Senator Kamala Harris. Okay, so Senator Harris is asking for something quite ridiculous. So she's asking for more direct cash payments to Americans. Her bill with Senator Bernie Sanders and Senator uh, Ed Markey would provide $2,000 stimulus checks and make them monthly. Individuals would re also receive $2,000 per dependent up to $6,000. So this will never pass. I mean, $2,000 per month for eligible people is just ridiculous. It's going to drive up the national deficit to insurmountable levels. I mean, it's already insurmountable. National de deficit is already in the trillions of dollars, but I mean, this is in no way sustainable and it'll never pass the Senate uh, because, of course, it's a Republican dominated. They would never pass it. So I don't know why she's making these unrealistic proposals for uh, 2000 per month you know, per individual plus the dependents is just not sustainable and it's not realistic. They may argue or debate that, hey, we're gonna tax corporations more, but that's not gonna happen anyways because corporations have lots of lobbying power and, you know, of course, they're funding campaigns for senators and uh, representatives. So there's no way in hell it's gonna happen. And I don't know why she's suggesting it. So, I mean, it's not gonna happen. So, I mean, again, there's no way it's gonna happen. So anyways, uh, thanks guys. Uh, hopefully you guys like the video. Please like and subscribe. And also please check out my book in the description below on Amazon. It describes how I, as a 35 year old, became a multimillionaire only by working a salary job that ranged from 40,000 to 81.5K from the ages of 22 to 35. So that's it guys. Hopefully you liked the video and stay tuned for the next one.